are moving camps. We're heading to a campground that has first come, first serve sites on a river. So we're hoping to get a riverside site and be able to stay there for a little while. Well, good morning from beautiful Jasper, Alberta, Canada. It's a very peaceful, quiet morning here. The sun is starting to come out. It's a little overcast this morning. The wildflowers are starting to bloom. You can smell the wild roses. This is wild rose country. And just along the path there, there are a bunch of wild roses. You can smell the scent of them, the forest. It's absolutely wonderful. We arrived here at this campground yesterday and we were hoping to get one of the sites that's along the river. There's a river back here and there are several sites that back into it. However, they were all taken and uh, we found this site, which is a corner site. It's huge. There's just enormous area around us, lots of space. So for the time being, we just decided we like this spot better. I think it offers a little bit more privacy. It's a little quieter and uh, yeah, I really like it. I do have my bear spray handy here and an air horn. This is bear country, grizzly country. So they could be anywhere. They are on the side of the road right near town. Um, they could really be anywhere. So I just always stay alert and prepared just in case I come across one. And hopefully if I do, it's at a very safe distance. This is actually the fifth campground that we have stayed in since being here in Canada. It's been about two weeks now. We first stayed at Johnston Canyon Campground. We were able to make reservations at that one. It was one of the few that were open. So we stayed there for two nights and we went over to Mosquito Creek, which is first come first serve. And we got there the day that they opened. We got the site that we wanted. However, it wasn't the experience we were expecting. We backed right onto the river. The views were absolutely incredible incredible. It was just a stunning sight. However, it was at the end of a huge dirt lot where people would come in to turn around and they would just hang out at some of the campgrounds that were right next to us and have picnics. They would walk through our campsite. It was very busy. There was very little privacy. And uh, we decided not to stay there as long as we were initially uh, anticipating. We only stayed there for, I think, four nights or something like that. And we were out of there. After that, we moved over to the Whistler's Campground up in Jasper. And we were only there for one night. And then we moved over to Wapiti, which is right across the street. Those are like the two big campgrounds inside Jasper National Park and very busy. Uh, you do have to reserve those spaces in advance and they're only usually available for several consecutive nights at a time, not like more long-term, like two weeks. So we uh, moved over to Wapiti and then we took off and went on a two-night backcountry backpacking trip, which was absolutely epic awesome. I loved it. The scenery was mind-blowing. If you haven't watched it, I will link it below and at the end of this video. It was an awesome trip. We came back and stayed at Wapiti for a couple of nights. We got a beautiful site right on a creek. The elk were coming through. It was very peaceful, very gorgeous, but it is more expensive there. They have more amenities like showers, which uh, that's pretty much all they have that this one doesn't have and the first come first serve ones don't. And these ones are a lot less expensive. So we came to this one here, which I will share the name of later on <laughs> after I'm cleared out of this place. And you can stay here up to two weeks. This is gonna be home for just a little while. By the way, the US dollar goes further here in Canada. So 
camping is cheaper for us U.S. citizens here, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and get this day rolling. Wow, folks, we have been having quite the cold snap here in the Canadian Rockies. It has been in the low 30s for the last several days, but I have been staying nice and warm in my RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. I've stayed in bed quite a bit longer than I normally would because it is just so warm and cozy in bed in the morning that I don't want to get out. What is RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding? RVMattress.com is a Brooklyn Bedding brand known for top-of-the-line comfort and quality. Plus, they have a factory in Arizona and ship conveniently to you for free anywhere in the U.S. They offer different firmness options, heights, and dimensions, even RV-specific and non-traditional sizes to fit right into your lifestyle. When searching for a new RV mattress, I personally needed it to be not only comfortable, but to fit into my travel trailer. Based on this, I picked the Signature Hybrid in the Short Queen and Medium Firmness. You do not have to settle for a subpar mattress for your van, RV, or trailer. This is one luxurious mattress that competes with any mattress that you might have in a Sticks and Bricks home. With your RV mattress by Brooklyn Betty Mattress, you get a 120 night sleep trial along with a 10 year warranty. I have over 912 nights of sleeping well on this awesome mattress, but it's not just for sleeping. I work here, stream movies, chill out, lounge, read. This is hands down the most comfortable place in my tiny home on wheels. RVmattress.com delivers your mattress right to your door for free within the U.S. Plus, it just comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up yourself. The best part about all of this is that Brooklyn Bedding has their own factory in Arizona. All of their mattresses are designed in Arizona by master craftsmen who have been building mattresses for over 25 plus years. I love my RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding and I think you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out RVmattress.com. You can scan the QR code here click the link below or visit rvmattress.com slash Catherine and get 25% off your mattress with code Catherine to help support the channel. Thank you as always to RV Mattress for sponsoring. Now back to the video. This is what's for breakfast this morning. This is the pretty standard breakfast, eggs, bacon, and fruit. adding some of these guys to spice things up a little bit. Driving in the Canadian Rockies is just as big a part of the adventure as anything. The views from every direction are incredible. stop today is about an hour north of our camp to an old familiar place. There are so many incredible views. No matter where you look, it's like a postcard. It's hard to drive anywhere because you just wanna pull over constantly and get shots. And you're guaranteed to see wildlife along the side of the road, no matter what outing you're on. We 
have just arrived to that old familiar place and I'll show you where it is. It's probably the most scenic drive to a Walmart ever. We went to Walmart and Safeway to get stocked up. Walmart is not a super center, so they didn't have the full grocery department, meat department, produce, and all that. So we came over to Safeway, which was right here next to it, and uh, stocked up on everything else we need. Now it's time to head back to camp. Directly from camp, there's a short path to the river. We decided to go there and cool off for a bit. Okay, tonight's dinner is a very simple BLT. We've got some sourdough bread, of course bacon, tomato, lettuce. We're gonna add cheese to ours. And then I will be also making a little side salad uh, as well. It was a lovely day with beautiful scenery. We closed out the night by the fireside. Mm, the coffee is good. I had someone ask me why all van lifers show themselves making coffee. Is it a prerequisite? Is it a prerequisite? <laughs> I can only speak for myself, but I'm showing you my life usually daily, and I drink coffee every day. So it's something I do every single day. Can't uh, start the day without my coffee. This place really filled up last night, and it's a Thursday. I drove through and did some recon last Saturday and there were tons of empty spaces, but it looked like last night, lots of people were circling around this loop several times looking for a space. So yeah, I think it might've been pretty full. I didn't go and check the rest of the campground, but I'm assuming it was pretty packed. So far here in Canada, I've only stayed at official campgrounds. I know that they have a lot of what's called crown land here where you can camp for free. It's very similar to our BLM land down in the US. However, I am just learning my way around the country now and I don't 
I'm not familiar with what would be the best areas to camp in, safest areas. So if you are from Canada and might have some awesome suggestions of crown land that I should visit, go ahead and leave a comment below. As I mentioned yesterday, the US dollar goes much further here in Canada. So in Canadian, this campground here is $28.50. And what that translates to in American dollars is about $20 per night. They do tack on an extra fee for a fire permit at this particular campground, but they have stacks and stacks of firewood that you can just have at your disposal. You can take as much as you want. You can have fires every night. Most of them do build the fire permit fee into the camping fee. However, the campground that we stayed at in Banff called Mosquito Creek allows you to pay for the fire permit separately. So if you don't want a fire, you don't have to pay the extra for the permit. So that one wound up being about 13 US dollars per day. I feel like that's really reasonable to be staying in a national park, $13 a day. I don't think there's any US park that you could stay in for that cheap. That of course was dry camping. They did not have water available at that campground. However, there was a creek running through it, so you could utilize the creek for water if you needed to. Today is a gorgeous day to do more exploring, so that's what we're gonna do. The town that I took you to yesterday was called Hinton, and it's outside of the park. It's more like a suburban, regular suburban community. Inside the park is Jasper. Jasper is actually officially inside Jasper National Park, and it is a small, charming town. Has everything that you need, really, gas stations, grocery stores, all kinds of different shops, restaurants, but it's very charming. It's a small town. So I'll take you through there and show you what that looks like. And then hopefully go do a short waterfall hike and see what else we can get into. If you've never been to Canada, I highly recommend you come. I did not come here until 2019. That was the very first time I ever visited. This is only my third time here. And I'm absolutely falling in love with this country. It is just stunning at least a portion that I've seen. If you are from the U.S., it's not too far to get here. It's our neighboring country. I would definitely recommend taking a trip up and visiting. If you don't know this already, Jasper and Banff are connected, very similar to Yellowstone National Park and Grand Teton National Park. Banff is to the south, Jasper is to the north, and you can enter one from the other. I feel like Banff has a higher visitation rate. I don't know this statistically. It just feels like it's a lot more crowded. The town of Banff, which is located inside of the park, is much more uh, claustrophobic and congested than Jasper, which is inside Jasper National Park. Um, I prefer Jasper only because I feel like there are less people here. It's easier to move around the town. Both parks are absolutely stunningly gorgeous. <laughs> uh, you can't go wrong with either one. Jasper is a specialized municipality and town site in western Alberta within the Canadian Rockies. The town site is in the Athabasca River Valley and is the commercial center of Jasper National Park. Established in 1813, Jasper House was first a fur trade outpost of the Northwest Company and later Hudson's Bay Company on the York Factory Express trade route to what was then called New Caledonia, now British Columbia, and Fort Vancouver on the Lower Columbia River. Jasper House was 35 kilometers north of today's town of Jasper. The Jasper town site is at the intersection of Highway 16 and Highway 93, Icefields Parkway. It is near the confluence of the Athabasca River and the Mayette River. It lies between the Victoria Cross Ranges, Pyramid Mountain, the Line Range, and Trident Ridge. Lakes near the Jasper town site include Pyramid Lake, Patricia Lake, Lake Annette, Lake Edith, Lac Bovart, Maline Lake, and Medicine Lake. 
It's a charming town with everything that you need if you're staying nearby. We did utilize the grocery store, the laundromat, and ate at several restaurants that were very good. After stopping in town, we made our way down to the Athabasca Falls. Athabasca Falls is a class 5 waterfall with a total drop weight of 24 meters and a width of 46 meters. A powerful, picturesque waterfall, Athabasca Falls is not known so much for its height as for its force due to the large quantity of water falling into the gorge, which can be substantial even on a cold morning in the fall. took Highway 93A to the Edith Cavell Road. It gains elevation quickly and winds up in the High Alpine. On a little spur of the moment adventure, we drove up the uh, Edith Cavell Road up to the Edith Cavell parking area. We gained quite a bit of elevation and now we are on the Path of the Glaciers Trail. It's only open for a little ways, I guess where it overlooks a pond and uh, it's really pretty. <laughs> we're climbing up right now and I don't know what our elevation is, but we're pretty we're pretty up here.
heard some ice fall in here. You can see the stream coming down. We tap the day off with a couple of bull elk on the roadside. Just think, these mind-blowing scenes are here every single day. It has come time to wrap up this video. I'm definitely out of my comfort zone being here in a different country. It is definitely different than moving around the US. I don't have the confidence that I have moving around in the US. It's, it can be slightly anxiety inducing at times. Um, this place is so monolithic with all these mountains all around. It's a bit overwhelming. <laughs> In the US, if you've been around for a while, you probably recognize the fact that I tend to return to the same places again and again. I have a certain comfort level. I know where to go. I know where I want to camp. I know what I want to see. Uh, I do obviously visit new places as well in the U.S., but it's just a little bit different when it's your own country. I feel like it's a good thing getting out of your comfort zone, and for me, it's what helps me to grow, and new experiences help me to grow. Uh, figuring things out help me to grow, and uh, the longer that I'm here, the more comfortable that I'm getting. Getting out of my comfort zone can be good as long as I'm not doing it in a reckless way. The Canadian Rockies remind me in Yellowstone or Wyoming and Montana in ways because of all the wildlife that you see. Uh, you can see it just along the roadsides and that's really awesome, but it definitely has a different vibe. It's stunningly beautiful, probably one of the most beautiful places on the planet, I would imagine. <laughs> and I'm just very happy to be here. Don't know how long I'll be here, but we'll just take it one day at a time and uh, stay as long as it feels good or I get booted out of the country, <laughs> whatever comes first. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you all enjoyed coming along. As always, I appreciate you viewing. I appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. It really helps the Channel and it's absolutely free and I will see you all on the next adventure. See you soon everybody. Bye-bye.